This is Radio Health Journal. I'm Nancy Benson. This week, the horrific origins of chemotherapy. Part of the reason this story is so little known was that, of course, no one wanted to tell patients that they were receiving a chemical weapon. Classified World War II disaster that launched the war on cancer when Radio Health Journal returns. I'm Reed Pence, the producer and host of Radio Health Journal. If you like listening to Radio Health Journal, you'll also like our sister show, Viewpoints, which covers a wide array of topics from education to history to the environment. Here's a preview of what they're covering this week on Viewpoints. People were really interested in cooking thematically. So people would throw yellow dinners and orange dinners and pink dinners. We explore the interesting trends and themes of early American cuisine in the 1920s and 30s. Then... A waitress will bring this big slab of cream pie to the table and just like you look to the table next to you and you look over and say, I want a piece of pie, you know? You're gonna need to grab a piece of pie after this story. I'm Marty Peterson. And I'm Gary Price. These stories in-depth this week on your public affairs magazine, Viewpoints. Listen to Radio Health Journal and Viewpoints on your favorite radio station. And subscribe and listen anytime on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and Spotify. Also, follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Radio Health Journal. Decades ago, the three main treatments for cancer, surgery, radiation, and chemotherapy, were known by nicknames that acknowledge their violence, cut, burn, and poison. Chemotherapy is indeed an often harsh, grueling treatment with unpleasant side effects. But countless patients owe their lives to chemo and its ability to kill cancer cells. The origins of chemotherapy are not pleasant either. It all started in 1943, at the scene of a horrific World War II battle, when a German air raid sank 17 Allied warships in the Italian seaport of Bari. One of the ships that was sunk that night was carrying a secret cargo of mustard gas. Mustard gas was outlawed by the Geneva Convention after World War I, but we were bringing it into Europe secretly just in case Uh, Hitler, when the Germans started to lose the war, resorted to using it, and we needed to have it in hand to retaliate. That's Jeanette Conant, author of The Great Secret, the classified World War II disaster that launched the war on cancer. She gives a graphic description of that battle scene's aftermath. When the boat was exploded, a huge poisonous cloud of mustard was released over the harbor and gassed many of our sailors. And then even worse, a lot of it leaked into the harbor water so the young guys that swam to shore were plucked out by rescue boats were completely coated in this weird mixture of mustard and fuel oil. They really kind of stewed in this poisonous mixture, unaware that they were being poisoned by mustard gas that had leaked into the water. President Franklin Roosevelt and Britain's Prime Minister Winston Churchill covered up this violation of the Geneva Convention, while survivors who at first appeared uninjured began developing mysterious ailments. Conan says young men were covered in blisters, their skin turning a lurid color. Many died excruciating deaths, basically cooked from the inside. The U.S. Army dispatched Lieutenant Colonel Stuart Alexander, a young physician from the Chemical Warfare Service, to investigate. He was doing everything he could to save lives at the scene, but he also wrote this amazing report on what he was looking at. And what he saw in these bodies was that mustard gas attacked white blood cells. And he realized that if it did that in these healthy young sailors, then maybe it could be used in very small doses to stop the rapidly dividing malignant white blood cells that are cancer. And so he made this breakthrough observation in the middle of this tragedy. Alexander's boss in the Chemical Warfare Service, Colonel Cornelius Dusty Rhodes, read these classified reports with a keen interest. Rhodes was also director of Memorial Hospital in New York, the world's leading cancer hospital at the time. He realized immediately that he had stumbled on something terribly important. So Rhodes organized a huge secret military research effort to start looking at whether nitrous mustard, mustard gas, could be turned into a medicine, the first medicine, as it were, for cancer. And he called it chemotherapy. By 1949, the FDA granted approval for the first refined chemo medicine called mustard gin. 
part of the reason this story is so little known was that, of course, no one wanted to tell patients that they were receiving a chemical weapon. And so, uh, you know, after a while, the origins of the drug were sort of hushed up because it's a truly terrifying thing, particularly for, say, parents of children, to be told that a very toxic chemical weapon is really what they're using. But it's often the case that major medical breakthroughs are made in combat medicine. Plastic surgery came out of wartime surgery. Anesthesia came out of combat surgery. So many of our major medical breakthroughs have come from uh, terrible military catastrophes because you have so many dead and the doctors begin to see patterns or be able to make improvements and innovations that then change the course of medical history. Which, of course, has parallels to what we're seeing today with the COVID-19 pandemic. There are so many eerie parallels in the book because the book is also about essentially the race for a cure. And so you see when you have a surge of patients and the desperate need for treatments to save lives, how sometimes doctors can suddenly make a breakthrough observation that propels medicine forward. In a way, I've found it quite inspiring in these hard times because you realize that at any moment there could be another Stuart Alexander who connects the dots and finds a cure for the coronavirus. Today, there are many forms of standard chemotherapy, but most work on the same principle. They're poisonous to growing cells, especially cancer cells, which grow the fastest. Alexander is the true hero, Conan says. Without his acute observations, countless more people, men, women, and children, would have lost their lives to cancer. However, the events at Bari remain classified for decades. Only in September 2006, on the 60th anniversary of the first chemotherapy trial, did the man who started it all finally receive the tribute he was due. Dr. Jules Hirsch paid tribute to Dr. Stuart Alexander in the Journal of the American Medical Association, reminding readers of Bari disaster and the inquisitive physician investigator who, quote, sifted through the horrors and extracted a gem something potentially useful for the abatement of human disease. Jeanette Conan's book, The Great Secret, The Classified World War II Disaster That Launched the War on Cancer, is available now. You can learn more about her book and all our guests by visiting our website at radiohealthjournal.net. Our writer-producer this week is Polly Hansen, studio production by Jason Dickey. I'm Nancy Benson. And that's Radio Health Journal for this week. Radio Health Journal is a production of MediaTracks Communications. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram to learn more. And check Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and Spotify for a library of past programs. Plus, you'll always find previous segments and information about our guests at RadioHealthJournal.org. Join us again next week for another edition of Radio Health Journal. Coming up next week on Radio Health Journal. I just was astounded. I absolutely could not believe it. I mean, I can't think of a crueler thing to do to a mother or a family than to falsely accuse them of abusing their children. If kids are playing alone in a park, should you report the parents for child abuse? Then, have scientists finally found the key to healing an injured brain or spinal cord? When we inject these human cells into mice, it stimulates nerve fiber growth and also rescues dying nerve cells. All that and more on Radio Health Journal.